What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our Edge Studios. Today we're gonna to walk over uh, my portfolio, which has done me pretty well in the job industry for the past couple years. Uh, so I'm gonna offer everybody some tips and tricks on how to go about making something like this, as well as some, some of the comments that industry professionals who actually looked at my portfolio had to say about uh, what, what I was doing here. Um, now, this is the contents page. You always wanna have some sort of contents page um, I know a lot of people like to put their resume, you know, on the contents page. I'm not one to like to do that, but if you do, then that's totally fine. Um, what I've done here is make these kind of logos for each one of the project, and you'll see them basically pop up uh, as we go through all of the projects. So um, you always want to start off with some of your strongest projects. So the general rule is to start with your strongest project. Uh, or one of your stronger projects and then end off with another one of your stronger projects. So this is a competition that we did, a, a design competition that we did for uh, for a Chinese city. Um, and I just really like uh, the way that I portrayed, you know, or like rendered this master plan. So I uh, always want to make the image pop, right? So the image always has to be king on the, on the page. Um, and then you can see my logo here just to uh, correlate with what my contents say. Now, the in my opinion, the the uh, your your design brief, uh, you want to keep it short, right? Like you don't want the you don't want your design brief to take over the entire page. You want the image to be number one, and then the words to be number two. Always, 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 super important. Um, and then I always like to give a little bit of a context, so you can see on the right uh, left side here. I always want to tell people uh, where this is, right? So this is where the site is. And then a little bit of a of a concept image uh, down here, and you'll see that basically repeated throughout my my entire portfolio here, um, which everybody should really just do because it, it establishes kind of consistency throughout your portfolio that everybody everybody does like. Um, and then I just like to start off with a plan. Now this image right here is done with uh, with Photoshop. If you guys want to learn how some of these images are done, I have a video. Uh, that I'll put on the top right, so you can can check that out. Uh, but yeah, just letting the image take over the text, right? You are introducing the site. We have a site plan. This is how you know. This is how we got to the site and what our process is, as well as where everything is uh, in the site, right? Like uh, you have legends down here, and then just a simple concept diagram on the right. Um, what I like to do, um, this is what I like to do recently, actually, is actually keep the uh, text in some sort of box, right? So um, people, you know, like to center it on the left or, you know, center it on the right or center it in the middle. Um, but what I found over the years is that if you actually think about your text as a graphic body, it works a lot better in, um, in how you lay out your portfolio. But yeah, you always want to kind of put your renderings and um, things like that at the end, I found. Um, you want to start with some of the strongest images and also end with some of the strongest images. So these images here are done uh, with uh, Rhino first, right? And then into Lumion and finally into Photoshop. This is usually my workflow for any kind of rendering that you see. Um, but if you guys like to see a video on my workflow, uh, leave that down in the comments below so that I actually know what kind of video will help you guys out. But yeah, so um, just two really strong images to to finish off this design project, right? And obviously, you want to have some sort of caption. But again, the 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 emphasis here is that the 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 words really don't need to overpower any of the images. You need the images to pop, and you need them to speak for themselves, right? Um, and then just going over uh, another project. This is one of my undergrad graduate projects. Um, again, starting off with a strong rendering, right? Uh, and then you can see some of the things repeated. You have our logo here. Um, the the text isn't overpowering, right? Um, some of the comments that I got on the actual text is you always want to have, obviously, your title, the biggest thing. Uh, but also, you want to put uh, who you did this project with. And most importantly, I, th I think, is the duration, right? Um, so you want to put if you did this in school, if you did this professionally, if this is a design competition, employers would want to see this kind of stuff. Um, and you also want to put how long 
uh, you actually did this project for it. Just so people have a gauge of, you know, what your abilities are and how fast you work and what kind of quality you produce for that amount of time that you had. Uh, so also super important. Let's move on. Uh, for this one, um, on the left, you can see, again, context, right? Uh, very important. Uh, and then some of the precedent studies that we did that I thought were very interesting and important, I actually also put in here. Now, uh, one thing I was struggling with with, uh, with my precedent is just I wanted all the images or all the projects to be the same page. But you really don't have to have that, right? You want If you want that consistency, you can go for it. But you really don't have to have that consistency. The more important projects can have more pages. The less important projects can have less pages. Um, so it's really up to you how you want to organize that, right? Uh, again, this is a part of uh, our precedent. And then our project actually starts right here, starting off with the plan as always, right? And then some of the strategies. So these diagrams uh, here are made again in Rhino, right? And then we actually went and took it into Illustrator. Um, and this is back when Rhino didn't have Arctic mode, so we actually have to add the lines manually with uh, the Make2D. But yeah, just uh, just kind of explaining what's going on in our uh, in our programming and what, what's happening with the water, which is a giant concept in this project itself. Um, and then ending off with some uh, images as always. All right, and then um, this is one of my first projects that I actually had to redo the rendering for. I, I did get into rendering uh, a bit later into my academic career. So um, again, big image, right? So same format is kept. You have the logo. Uh, you have everything that you want to put in your first page to keep the next pages to a minimum in terms of text, right? Um, again, context, context image, what it looks like right now. Uh, you have an analysis of surrounding streetscape. This is all done in Illustrator. Um, and then just a big plan, right? You want the plan to be the thing that reads for itself. Um, uh, I do believe I did an updated version of this one, but that's that's okay. This is also a pretty good looking plan. Um, so one thing you always want to have in your plan is obviously your scale bar and your north arrow. Super, super important. How you choose to do that is totally up to you. And I'm sure they tell you about this in school too, is that these things are super important, right? So this is all like an overall landscape plan where you want to show your uh, your your programming and what's going on, your circulation. Um, and then always just kind of uh, ending it off with some sort of rendering, uh, some sort of section, right? Just to give people an idea of how the space actually is. And make sure you guys are always including um, your key, right? So the key is really important to tell people where you actually cut these sections, right? All right. Um, and then this one is one that I did recently in grad school. Um, as you can see, the rendering style is a lot more developed. Uh, I actually took a, a, a long time to, you know, render these images uh, and they turn out pretty good. If you guys want to learn how to do something like this, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to... Uh, uh, get a tutorial out for you guys to make something like this. But uh, yeah, this one is uh, one from my grad program and it's for the Green New Deal Super Studio. But yeah, again, starting with a giant image uh, logo and then a say all you want to say about the project brief right here so you can keep the text uh, slightly lower in the following pages, right? So again, context contextual, uh, why I did what I did kind of things, right? Um, and then I have a condition before and a condition after, right? And I chose to basically have these side by side. And these images really is just about taking Google Earth, right? And then uh, making uh, or, or tilting the camera so that you have a, you have a nice angle uh, that you want to basically do some Photoshop on. Now, this is really just Photoshop. Um, I believe I did some of the labels uh, in Illustrator just because I didn't really like the way that, uh, you know, some of these might look pixelated in Photoshop. So all the arrows and, and, and labels I did do in Illustrator. Um, but, but yeah, like uh, putting the condition before and the condition after is a really effective way of showing your interventions on the site design. And it's really impactful, uh, I find, um, to actually show people what you're trying to do and things like that. So getting to the, to the end of the portfolio here and um, 
just wanted to show some of the you know diagram making and, and graphic making uh as well as number crunching so like in terms of statistics and things like that um how many are we thinking of residential commercial industrial uh which i thought was quite important for this for this project in particular i've included uh here in the back um, and then always just ending it off with another rendering right so uh, we always want to begin the project with some sort of strong graphical image, and we want to end the project with some sort of strong graphical image. Uh, if you guys are having trouble getting these strong images, uh, make collages, right? Collages are great for, for getting your concept across. Um, I have some tutorials on making collages. You can find a bunch of them on YouTube. But yeah, so uh, if you guys need help with making any sort of uh, renderings or like trying to look at or, or like get a feel of my workflow, then yeah, let me let me know in the comments and I'll and I'll put out a video for that. Um, but in the in the back, and this is something that I added at the very end, uh, which is very very important according to um, basically anybody that I've talked to in the industry, is you wanna you wanna basically show people you know who you are, right? Like what do you like to do uh, with all the skill that you have? So I have some fine arts uh, in here that some sketches that I've done uh, in the past, some paintings that I do. Um, and, and this is something that I really like doing, right? Crafts. So, so, um, right here on the top, um, is basically a nice shelf that we made or that I made, uh, from leftover acrylic, right? So we cut up a model. We had some leftover acrylic. I used the leftover acrylic to make a custom, uh, bathroom mini shelf where I can put all my contacts and, and, uh, products and, and things like that, uh, as well as a, you know, pen and stationary holder. Um, and this is from laser cut, um, MDF, I believe, or plywood. I totally forgot, but, uh, yeah, they kind of fit it together like a jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, there's just some things that I'm interested in, and it really gives people an idea of, you know, who you are, what you like to do, what kind of other skills that you have that might be related. But yeah, I think that's, uh, that's it. We have, yeah, just a back cover. I just left it nice and blank. But yeah, if you guys have any sort of questions on how to make a portfolio like this or uh, any of the images, leave a like, uh, do subscribe, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video.